Hello everybody and welcome back. My name is Winback and on today's episode of Heroes of the Storm, we're going to round this week out with Tassadar. And instead of playing the normal, fun, cool build, we're going to be playing the auto attack build, which is definitely something different. This is a YouTube video after all though, so feel free to like, comment, and subscribe your heart out. Thanks so much for watching. I appreciate everything that you guys do. And our team comps today on Infernal Shrines are going to be Tassadar, Ragnaros, Zul, Nova, and Kael'thas versus Samuro, Zagara, Leeming, Maiev, and Kel'Thuzad. The KTZ, if you will. Now, with all that out of the way, we can talk about Tassadar's abilities, even though we talked about them in some recent videos, and we'll put those up in the top right-hand corner for you at some point in this video, so you can see what the actual build is that isn't this one. Uh, but, Tassadar's abilities are going to be our Shock Ray, it's our Q, it's going to be a straight line skill shot, it roots Tassadar in place while it goes about its travel path, but it does a really huge amount of damage, and it's going to slow people by 30% for 2 seconds. Pretty cool stuff. I like this ability a lot, this is really the best part of Tassadar's rework from last year, so, good stuff. Our W is called Psionic Storm, and this is going to play a lot into the um, the kind of playstyle of this kit. So Psionic Storm is just going to put down a circle of damage that gradually spreads outward, dealing more damage um, each time that it ticks up. So you can kind of see it happening. Um, the crit kickers don't go off until it reaches critical mass, if you will. But let's see. So while a storm, while in a storm, enemies take 41 damage every 0.5 seconds, increasing by 20% for each consecutive instance of damage, up to 100%. Seems pretty cool. Ooh, he is just dead. You don't often see a Samuro just walk into certain death like that, but way to go. Kael'thas, thank you for rotating up and using your fire on top of my lightning to destroy the orc. Annoying guy. I don't even understand that character. Uh, our E is called Force Wall. This used to be a Tassadar Ultimate, but it has been relegated to the E button. And it is on an 18 second cooldown with a 0.5 second delay. And it's just going to let us put a big old Force Wall in between us and whatever that we want. Um, yeah, well, I mean, you could even put it between yourself and safety. Because it's, it's that kind of ability. Learning to target this bad boy is pretty important because I think it is one of the few options that Tassadar has to get out of some sticky situations and if you can aim it right and just walk right on through it as it's coming up certain death has been avoided but that's it though Tassadar only really has his force wall and his archon shield to save him from you know people diving into his face and trying to kill him uh, and I'll be honest with you it's really hard to avoid sometimes really 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 hard to avoid people getting all up on top of your shit now, our trait, you've probably seen it so far, but Tassadar doesn't auto-attack the so standard way. He shoots a beam out of his hand. It's called the Resonance Beam. And Tassadar's basic attack is channeled, slows people by 15%, and while channeling, your basic attack damage and mana regen increases by 25% up to a maximum of 100%. So you can see it down here with the Resonance Beam icon in the bottom left-hand corner. Once that's 100%, we're going to start getting mana back for the... Oh, he got pulled in, and he's going to get killed. Yeah. Can't do anything to save you from chains that you should probably dodge. I can't dodge them as easy, but um, that's my one criticism for this. I'm sure there's going to be a lot more. Don't hold me to that, please. So, uh, yes, but Resonance Beam giving us mana back. Really, really good stuff. And the... Um, attack damage increasing as well. Also, it's not terrible by any means. Um, but a lot of the build and the talents that we have for this... Oh my. For this particular Tassadar build are going to center on our W and our auto attacks. So you're going to see me standing still and trying to beam lots and lots of people uh, to make them have a bad time. I don't know if we can kill anyone with our auto attacks, because they don't really feel like they do that much damage, but we'll find out. Ragnaros going right back in, actually not getting chained this time, and taking the KTZ out in a revenge kill like no other. Maiev really could have pulled both of us right there, but uh, she just didn't, so 
I'll take it. I will go away. Well, Zul won't, but she's... Okay, we're going to get the Zagara, and Maiev decided to go back in because she thought I was going to die. And ha ha ha. No. Uh, but on to Tassadar's ultimates. Today, we're going to be picking up Black Hole because it's just too much meme in one video not to enjoy. Black Hole is going to send out a Black Hole along a travel path after a 0.5 second cast time. When enemies are pulled into the center of the black hole, they are going to take 424 damage and be stunned by 1.25 seconds. Now, the really cool combo that you have with the black hole uh, is to throw it, immediately put a wall down behind the person that you're throwing it onto, and then the black hole will just travel through them, hold them against the wall, and you can blast them with all of your other abilities. Uh, this does have to be kind of point blank because it's kind of difficult to hit targets from further range with the combo. Because you still have to be inside... Th oh, no. Okay. Are we going to be able to make it down here in time? No. Maybe? If Zagara hadn't stepped off of that point for the split second that she did, I wouldn't have gotten the objective. Still would have killed her, but definitely would not have gotten the objective. So, poor bug lady getting smited by the firstborn that's how we do it that's some starcraft lore for you you're welcome one of the one or one of the things i will say about this video is that the um this build is really good at taking camps i was not expecting it to do so well but as soon as you get plasma shield and a decent amount of quest completion done for your level one talent tassadar really doesn't take any damage from camps and he does a lot of aoe damage to them so Pretty feels good there. Are we going to be able to get out of here? Uh, can we at least get the kill on the Zagara? No? Okay. Well, at least no one died. That's the good news. So, the build itself is going to start off with our Kaidaran Amulet. Now, this is going to cause our auto attacks to recharge um, our, our trait 50% faster. So normally it would take a little bit longer to get up to 100% of our resonance beam, but now that's quicker. That's just the baseline portion. So after resonance beam has been fully charged for 80 seconds, it's going to bounce to one additional target for 75% damage, prioritizing heroes. And after it's been uh, channeled for double that time, it is go. Oh no, I'm dead. Okay. Mm I could. I definitely could have dodged that. Uh. That's unfortunate. Unfortunate stuff. Is Nova going to get out? I don't believe that she is, but she's going to take the KTC down with her, and I am okay with that trade. Now, I'm not really. It's two for two, but wait. Two for two? What? How did these other people die? I wasn't paying attention at all. I was trying to talk about the build, and I'm getting distracted again. So... Once we have the uh, level 1 quest completely charged up, it's going to bounce to two additional targets for 75% damage, which is pretty fucking cool. Um, not to mention, you know, just spreading all that damage from relative safety because the beam bounces is really good for things like uh, sieging or even taking these, these objectives. We can just kind of drop our auto attacks on safer targets like buildings and... Um, minions and monsters and shit and the auto attack will seek out a hero if they're near that target especially in the case of buildings since buildings live so long i mean you can really just kind of zero in on people hanging out in the back it's neat it's neat i don't think it's especially useful in a lot of circumstances but it does have its moments now our level four talent it's called plasma shield plasma shield is oh no well i wasn't expecting on losing my Ragnaros there. Um, also, wasn't expecting my team to be all other different places of the map. Well, there's an objective going on either, so I guess, you know, live and learn. Here we are. Um, but the Kaidaran Amulet is, er, sorry, the Plasma Shield is going to give us 3% of our maximum health in the form of shield, stacking up to 12% total. Um, oof, just obliterating that Li Ming. Doesn't look like Kael'thas is going to get away. He turned around for some reason. Not sure why. 
But we are taking out the damage dealers of the enemy team on the backside, and Maiev is going to get slowed so hard by my beam that there's no way she lives. Nova just wanted to sit in that bush until the absolute last second to shove a gun in Maiev's face. It's, uh, it's good stuff. Not sure how Samuro got away, but um, that's fine. We've already killed three people. I don't think we need to kill too many more. The objective is very clearly ours, regardless of how many the enemy team has picked up. So, our level 7 talent is called Arc Discharge. This is probably one of the cooler talents on this build. Um, so what's going to happen is, when Resonance Beam is fully charged, Tassadar's basic attack range is going to be increased by 1, and the next instance of damage is going to create a Psionic Storm on the target. That Psionic Storm has a 20 second cooldown, and it's only going to have a 10 second cooldown if our beam is fully charged. Am I going to die here? Nope, Ragnaros has got me a shield to speed me away. Absolute fantastic teammate. Love that guy. Never said anything about, bad about him in my entire life. Uh, don't check any more of this video for facts. Well, he's dead. So, Punisher's down. So... Uh, but Arc Discharge, again, it's since it makes a Psionic Storm under the target that you're auto-attacking, so it's just a point-and-click Psionic Storm on top of an already point-and-click Psionic Storm that you could technically put right down on top of it. Um, if you're auto-attacking someone who is, you know, likes to stand still or doesn't have a whole lot of mobility, like maybe a KTZ or a Zagara, um, that... Psionic Storm is going to hurt, and especially with later talents in the build, it's going to be even more detrimental for them to get hit by any of our auto attacks when we're on the verge of 100%. That being said, you do kind of have to be aware of what you're auto attacking when you're about to hit 100%, because if you auto attack a minion or a building or something that's not a hero, it is going to drop. I thought for sure he was going to step into that. I don't know why. But whatever. Um, but if you auto attack a minion, it's going to put a psionic storm under that minion. And you're going to be sad because you really want those underneath heroes. So that you can work in your level 13 talent. Feedback. When an enemy hero is affected by psionic storm, resonance beams slow is increased to 50%. And it's going to reduce physical armor by 25. Not sure what we're fighting over that camp for. I'm not going anywhere near that because I want to test my camp taking abilities and I just so impressed by them when it comes to this build. It's nuts. Like that's really good. Whew. Uh, but we've got our push going down here on the bottom side. We traded two for two and it looks like we got the camp. So I guess it could have been much worse than it was. That's fine. Um, but the feedback talent again so we can slow people by 50% with just our auto attacks if they're hit with our uh, baseline W, our psionic storm just from our, our kit, or if they get hit by that psionic storm that's created by our autos. So if you hit a person with an auto attack as it ticks over to 100% of your resonance beam, um, they're going to eat that psionic storm, they're going to get slowed, and they're going to lose 25 physical armor, and it's going to hurt them so much. As you can see there, that was the whole fucking force wall uh, uh, black hole combo, and it it's good. It was real good. So much so that I want to go back and see it again because it does kind of lead me into our 16 talent as well, which is called the Executor's Will, I believe, assuming that the entire fucking replay system does not fall apart in this exact moment six years later and this is still how we we handle replays with this game mm. so executor's will is going to be increasing our spell power okay and uh we're going to activate it right there hit a billion people with that black hole and then just watch them slowly turned to ash just absolutely disintegrated each and every one of them executor's will is going to give us a full resonance beam charge 20 percent spell power and our basic and heroic ability cooldowns are going to recharge 
25% faster. This effect lasts as long as resonant, resonance beam remains at full charge. So basically, you're going to slap Executor's Will, you're going to auto-attack a person, they're going to have the Psionic Storm underneath them, they're going to be slowed, they're going to miss armor, you can hit them with another Psionic Storm if you want to, then you can slap a wall directly down in front of them if you haven't already, hit them with the black hole, and then all of that damage is just going to crush them into the salty depths of the sea absolutely fantastic and i really 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 love the ability for that reason um yeah this is the one that mainly competes with thermal lance uh, at 16 psychic shock is fine but executor's will and thermal lance i think honestly more people probably take executor's will whereas i am one of the few weirdos who likes thermal lance better but as you can see, the ability is straight busted um, with the amount of damage that you can do, with all the cooldowns you can line up, with all the shit that just you can throw at the enemy team. It's nuts. Um, oh no. Well, he's fine. He's Ragnaros. He's a bruiser. He can live through quite a bit. He's going to step off of that KTZ ult real quick so he doesn't get any more resets, and we're going to watch the Punisher punch him to death. That, I, okay, I guess the game's over. Can't really say I was expecting something different, but there you have it. Our level 20 talent, we're just going to upgrade our black hole Kugelblitz, I want to say is how it's pronounced. Correct me if I'm wrong, please. But this is going to launch the uh, black hole, and uh, on top of spitting out mini psionic storms for every hero that it gets, uh, that it hits... It's going to reduce their armor, and it's actually going to reduce the cooldown. Uh, no, it does not reduce the cooldown. I could have sworn. That's just what they did for the ability baseline, I remember now. So, they dropped it to 60 seconds all the time from, I think it was 80 seconds prior to that buff. But, um, yeah. The, the 20 talent upgrade is cool. Um, I like having the, the reduced armor and then the mini psionic storms underneath there, but I know a lot of people will usually take the wall upgrade or the, what's the, uh, the spell power one that I, I really don't like. Um, yeah, but since we were going full meme with this fucking build anyway, why not take the meme alt upgrade? Totally worth it. Really good for bursting targets as well, if you manage to hit them like we did in that one little choke, even though we weren't level 20 when we hit that black hole, but don't pay attention to that. Uh, 707. That's how much damage that was doing at the end there. That's pretty nuts. If you need it one more time, the build is going to be Kaidaren Amulet, Plasma Shield at 4, 7 is going to be Arc Discharged, Black Hole at 10, or you can do... The responsible thing and take Archon. I mean, li live your life. It's your game. Uh, feedback at 13. Executor's Will at 16. And then Google Blitz at 20. There you have it. That is going to do it for this week. Thank you so much for hanging out for the off meta builds, seeing how much fun and how much we can get done with them. That poor guy didn't finish his quest. Neither did that poor guy, but we still won. So I guess that guy didn't either. That feels bad. Not that you would with this on these characters. They're all so tiny. Okay, I'm done. I'll see you next time. Thanks so much for hanging out again. And GG's. Peace out.